again. Uh, it is me, Professor Rhubarb Johnson, here to give you another lovely lesson in learning about League of Legends. Wow, amazing, right? I know. Uh, so today, what I'm going to do to get started is just go through... Uh, this This will be a shorter little bit. It's mainly just an explanation uh, to explain runes and or masteries, as they used to be called. Because uh, there was an update for Season 9 slash 10 that kind of changed the whole thing, and it became quite uh, confusing for other people that, uh, you know, maybe been playing a while, and so you had the old rune pages set up, and then you come back and you're like, I don't know what's going on. So, uh... Right, it was nice enough to give everyone five pre-made pages, uh, which would be right here. Inspiration, the Timeless, Resolve, the Colossus, Sorcery, the Calamity, Domination, the Executioner, and Precision, the Perfect. So, these five right here are pre-selected. Um, none of them are bad. They're like a general consensus of one of the five main trees. And the issue that arises is you can't edit those pages. They are set that way so you don't screw them up. So in case you just want to rock one thing every game, then you're just with it, no big deal. Uh, the issue becomes sometimes, let's say, uh, you wanted to take this one, Resolve the Colossus, and so one of the abilities, the keystone one on there, is the little larger diamond slash rhombus. Uh, called Grasp of the Undying, and I'm going to go through each of those individually to explain what they are. And so, Grasp of the Undying gives you some health back after you enter combat. Uh, if you hit within four seconds an enemy champion, you will store some health. Uh, but if you're playing a support champion, you probably want to take one of the other keystones in that tree, uh, which is Aftershock, and it gives you a large amount of defenses and then after a short while to explode and create some damage um so but you don't really want to take grasp if you're going to be playing support with another person in your lane that's mainly taken for usually the top lane sometimes a few mid laners uh, but usually not in the bot lane so now to get on to the actual explanations okay so i'm just going to go ahead and click on this little basic support tree that I made. And I'm going to go through and edit everything. Just don't really pay attention to any of the names that I have here. Um, you can obviously rename them whatever you want. And I have purchased rune pages in the past. Uh, so I believe you get one free one, possibly two, for a total of seven, even though five of them are pre-selected and cannot be changed. Um, but you can always purchase more in the store. So, uh, first here we have the Precision Tree, which means improved attacks and sustained damage. So Precision is one of the trees that has four keystones. Uh, when these were released, each one only had three, and the, that has changed uh, drastically throughout the patches and things that have come out while this new system has been in effect. So, first one here is Press the Attack. Hitting an enemy champion three times consecutively makes them vulnerable, dealing bonus damage and causing them to take more damage from all sources for 6 seconds. So this is very good on champions who auto-attack. Uh, you see it primarily taken if you're going to be playing AD carry um, on things such as a Jinx or even a Sivir sometimes, um, and sometimes even a Vayne, uh, because if you hit him three times, then every other time you hit them they're going to be taking more and more damage so the faster attack speed that you have the easier it is to proc press the attack and to make it go off um so it's it's pretty good to take that it's kind of specific to that role obviously you're welcome to really do whatever you want but generally it's kind of reserved uh for the ad carry role and specifically one champion that it really shines on is vain uh due to one of her abilities being a passive ability that creates like a little ring about each enemy and then every third hit deals bonus true damage so basically you're procking your keystone along with procking Vayne's ability 
meaning you're just dealing lots and lots of damage, which is why she's one champion who's very good into the large amount of tanks that are in the game. So the next keystone we have here is Lethal Tempo. One and a half seconds after damaging a champion, you gain a large amount of attack speed. Lethal Tempo allows you to exceed the attack speed limit. So there was a attack speed limit put in place a uh, long, long time ago, and it's 2.5. So you can attack maximum 2.5 times per second, nothing over that. There was a period of time where one champion, Kogma, was able to exceed that. Um, with one of his abilities, it increased his range and his attack speed, so he was able to go over that limit, and then they decided, that's pretty unfair, uh, so they made it hard, stop, just cut him off, and that was it. So, it was 2.5, just from then on, and then they added this rune, so, if you, let's see, you're an attack speed champion, that, instead of taking press the attack, you want to take lethal tempo on Jinx, per se. Um, she has a lot of attack speed that she has from her kit, along with you build attack speed items with her uh, for crit chance as well, and she can easily get up to 2.5 based off of her items. So, one really big thing uh, about that is if you're stuck, you know, three items per se, and you're at 2.5 attack speed. It's, well, you can't get any faster. With Lethal Tempo, you can proc that and go over, so you can hit over three, sometimes even four, because uh, Jinx's passive get excited uh, every time a kill or tower is taken. She gains a lot of movement speed, a lot of attack speed, so with Lethal Tempo, she can get really, really disgusting really, really fast. Um, so the third keystone we have here is fleet footwork. Attacking and moving uh, builds energy stacks. At 100 stacks, your next attack heals you and grants increased movement speed. Uh, so what that means is uh, you walk around and you'll start to build up charges and then at 100, your next basic attack heals you uh, at a little bit of movement speed. So this is taken on some 80 carries that can't move around very much uh, or uh, 80 carries that can't move around very much. It really doesn't matter uh, in that case. And there's plenty of other champions outside of that role that would want to take this. Uh, one of them being an Akali, who is going all over the place. And uh, having that little bit of healing could just be nice uh, if you're able to proc it pretty easily. So in that little bit of movement speed really can make a difference. Uh, you can just get out of range of an enemy ultimate or uh, being rooted in place if you have the hundred stacked up and are able to hit one thing. So, it, it's pretty good to take. It's not the most powerful. The other three in this tree are more powerful, but this definitely has the most utility um, for keeping yourself alive. So the fourth one for the keystones is Conqueror. So you gain stacks of adaptive force when attacking enemy champions. After reaching 12 stacks, you heal for a portion of the damage you deal to champions. So adaptive force was something they added when they changed this whole system. And it's essentially a bonus stat. Like, let's say it's plus 8 damage. What it, If you have more ability power, it's going to be bonus AP. If you have more attack damage, it's going to be bonus attack. So it's adaptive based on whatever route you're going. Because some champions can sort of pick between them, uh, whether AP or AD. So, with this, uh, get up to 12 stacks, and you only get stacks for attacking enemy champions. Uh, not from large monsters, not from minion waves, so if you're not going to be hitting champions, if you're just going to be by yourself, Conqueror is often not the ability you want to take. Uh, it's very powerful for dueling, because you can easily reach those 12 stacks and then start healing while you're dealing damage. And it's not a massive heal, but it is definitely better than the heal from the Fleet Footwork uh, Keystone. And the big thing with Conqueror, for ranged champions, you get one stack for every basic attack. For melee champions, you get two stacks for every basic attack, because it's 
more challenging to play a melee champion, so it's a lot easier to proc Conqueror on a champion like a Renekton than it is a champion like a Ezreal. Because Renekton, you can dash in there, hit, 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 you know, boom, there's six to eight stacks already out of 12, and then once you get that, you can just start healing, and it, it works pretty well. So, and then underneath the keystones, and each tree, there are a series of nine uh, smaller runes, and you can choose three of them for your primary tree, and then you can choose two of the uh, smaller runes for the secondary tree, but you cannot choose a keystone in the secondary tree. So that's why you have a main focus and then a side focus sort of thing. Uh, and then I'll get to the bottom little part on the right there later. That's some extra stats. So, uh, you can pick from any of the three per row, but you can't pick, like, all... I'm not going to be able to take Overheal, Triumph, and Presence of Mind all at once. Uh, you can only pick one per row. So... Like, for instance, let's say I want to go to the attack. There we go. There is my uh, potential keystone set up for a new rune page that I'm building. But that's not the point here. Uh, we're just going through teaching what each of these do so you can kind of make an educated decision on what you want to take into your next game so you're a little better prepared for it. So Overheal does exactly what it says. Excess healing on you becomes a shield. So if you're at full health and you have some life steal, that life steal is going to be converted into a shield. There you go. It's pretty good, especially on champions that build a lot of life steal, because um, you can essentially just have a shield at all times. It's nice. Triumph is good, especially if you are hungry for uh, gold. So takedowns restore 12% percent of missing health and grant an additional 20 gold so 12 percent doesn't seem like a lot but later on in the game that can really help keep you alive in dire situations and that 20 gold 20 gold seems like nothing not important at all but let's say you get three quick takedowns in a game that's a bonus 60 gold that you wouldn't have otherwise and so that maybe that can help you get to the next tier for an item rather than just grabbing the smaller parts of an item because you're missing out on a little bit of gold. So it really is a nice boost, uh, and it's a very good one to take uh, pretty much generally if you're going to run the uh, precision tree here. Third one on the row is Presence of Mind. Takedowns restore mana or energy and increase their maximum amounts. This is an absolute must if you are playing a champion based off of energy. Because, unlike mana, which increases throughout the game, regardless who you're playing, as long as they have mana, whenever you level up, your total mana is going to be increased. Energy does not. It is at a cap of 200 and will not change for the rest of the game. So, Akali, level 1, her Q is 120 energy. You can't fire off two Qs until it starts recharging. It's pretty ridiculous. But, taking presence of mind, getting some takedowns, you can get up to a maximum of 250. That's a bonus 50 energy you would not have at all and can't do anything about unless you take this. So it is very, very crucial to take this on energy-based champions, which are a lot of the ninja champions. Um, and other champions, I mean, it's nice to have two for extra mana. Um, potentially, uh, if you're running Rise, if you wanted to take Precision in your secondary tree, he has more ability power based off of how much mana he has. And so you could take Presence of Mind, so then he's just increasing his mana uh, as he's going to help out with his ability power boosts and things. You know, just like that. Alright, so moving on to the second row here. So the first one, we have the Legends. The Legends don't really mean anything, it's just kind of... Here's a different set of things that are going on. So this one, a Clarity... It, takedowns on enemies grant permanent attack speed up to a cap. Pretty much just like it sounds. Get some takedowns, get more attack speed. Uh, tenacity. Takedowns. Get more tenacity. You know, it's harder and to slow you and stun you. They don't last as long on you because you can break through them. Um, which is a good option to take sometimes. And then Bloodline. 
permanent life steal. So it is definitely weaker early game, because uh, each kill only grants like point three life steal. So the other two definitely provide uh, big bonuses, like every time it happens. And Bloodline, it kind of takes getting about half of Bloodline fulfilled, so ten takedowns, because uh, each of them it's twenty takedowns for the cap, I believe. And so it takes a while for it to get going, but then it is much more powerful than the other two, so it's kind of a trade-off if you're able to survive the game long enough to get Bloodline up there. Um, so in, any of the three is fine to take uh, at pretty much whenever you want it. it. Most people would either choose the Eclarity or the Bloodline, especially because Precision is primarily associated with the 80 carry champions. Um, the tenacity is not really super important. Yes, you get out of a slow 0.2 seconds faster, but you still have like 1500 health total and you're not going to survive anything. So, but again, you are welcome to do whatever you want. I'm not here to tell you the only things you can do. I'm just here to explain what th things are available for you to use. Uh, that is the whole point of this laboratory of learning. Moving on to the third row here. So, we've got Coup de Gras. Uh, you deal more champions to low health... Excuse me. You deal more damage to low health enemy champions. Um, there are a couple champions in the game that have abilities that are what they consider execute. And so that doesn't mean that when, if you hit the enemy champion with an ability, they're dead immediately. That they get executed. What that means is there's a range of damage that it will deal from a minimum up to a maximum and the lower on health they are the higher damage it will deal making it more likely that you will secure a kill if you are able to land this ability uh one that primarily comes to mind is akali's ultimate perfect execution uh pretty fitting name so it has two parts the first part you have to target an enemy and you hop to him the second part is the execute uh and it's a dash in any you can pick the direction and you dash to it and the lower on health the enemy champion is the more damage it will deal to them and so if they're low enough on health then it's definitely going to kill them unless they have a stopwatch hourglass uh, a zillion on their team kind of thing but taking coup de gras uh, with a Kali which is why some people instead of going with another tree, have been taking a precision tree and taking fleet footwork um, as their keystone with a Kali is moving around. You can get the extra heal since Kali doesn't have any healing until she builds uh, her number one item, the Hextech Gunblade. Uh, but then with Coup de Gras, it pairs well with her ultimate, so that way she can really make sure that she secures that kill and just keeps on getting fed, snowball, carry your game for you. Very nice. Next here, we have cut down. More damage to champions with more max health than you. Uh, this makes sense for some 80 carries because you don't build a whole lot of health items. Uh, there are a few that build some health items, uh, potentially like a Kog'Maw would build a Frozen Mallet, which is 30 attack damage and 700 health. So it gives you more survivability with more health, obviously, but cut down would be kind of useless there. So if you're a super, super squishy champion, and you know the enemy is going to have some big, beefy boys, cut down's a solid choice to take. Uh, and that's, you will always deal more damage to them if they have more health than you. That's just how it works. And the last one we have here, last stand, deal more damage to champions while you are low on health. And so this would actually be really good to take on a champion like Olaf, whose attack speed increases the lower health that he has. Uh, so you can kind of rampage towards people, get really low on health, and then you're dealing more damage and having more attack speed, making sure that you can easily secure kills. So, that's it for the precision tree. Uh, we're going to go ahead and move on to the second tree, which is domination, burst damage, and target access. And so this is taken on primarily assassin champions or uh, some mage champions. You'll sometimes even see... Some 80 carries take it because of one of the particular keystones, uh, and you will see it in the jungle because of the, some of the keystones have an effect throughout the game. Um, 
so it, it's a pretty versatile tree and it even if you don't see the one of the four keystones oftentimes you'll at least see this domination tree as the secondary because some of the little uh smaller runes down here are just hard to pass up in favor of other ones so first here is electrocute hitting a champion with three separate attacks or abilities within three seconds deals bonus adaptive damage again adaptive damage as i explained earlier is either ap or ad depending on which stat is higher for your champion um and so this is just a good way to deal some extra damage and it can be pretty good uh if you're attacking quickly things like that um it's just a good ability to have it, it, it's nice electric it's nice next we've got predator it's got an active effect that adds to boots uh so when you click it large boost of movement speed and it'll cause your next attack or ability to deal bonus adaptive damage so again adap higher stat uh so this will be taken you can take this in the jungle to try and go secure a gank uh one champion that comes to mind is gragas because he's not a particularly fast champion even though he's great at ganks because of the flash body slam combo that he has but with predator you get more movement speed so you can start running towards them for a gank a lot faster and sometimes you may not even need to waste your flesh you may be able to get the body slam just because you sped up with predator and you get the bonus damage from predator um, so it used to deal a lot more damage but the cooldown was a lot longer so they cut down the damage but the cooldown is shorter making it more usable uh for champions next is dark harvest damaging a low health champion inflicts adaptive damage and harvests a soul from the victim you can continuously harvest souls the whole game uh, it's highly unlikely you're going to get like hundreds and hundreds of souls. But racking them up obviously builds over time. It's really easy to harvest from enemy champions when they're always low on health. Uh, you'll see a lot of champions, if they deviate from their... A lot of champions will deviate from their designated role, as they say, uh, when played in ARAM. And a lot of champions will take Dark Harvest purely because you're unable to go back to Fountain to heal... Uh, until you die so everyone's gonna be low on health like all the time making dark harvest a good choice if you just want to keep getting stronger without having to go back and die uh so fourth here we got hail of blades large amount of attack speed for the first three attacks made against an enemy champion and so this comes to mind uh for champions like draven and rek'sai two very different champions but two champions that benefit from this keystone nonetheless uh draven makes it easy to get his uh axes out faster so throwing three of those axes out really fast really hurts a lot it really hurts a lot you don't want to deal with that if you don't have to uh and for rexai she builds fury uh when she's on the ground when she's above ground uh with her basic attacks and so Attacking quickly three times pairs with one of her ability that increases her next three attacks, deals some bonus damage. So you can quickly charge up to 100 Fury, making one of her other abilities start to deal true damage as opposed to just physical damage. So it can work really well for champions who attack super fast. Uh, sometimes uh, you'll see some weird strategies with it. Uh, one of them uh, particularly would be Tom Kench. And it's a pretty odd strategy but it can work in certain situations where you come in from behind them with your ultimate hit them three times to get your uh stacks up and then you can either eat the enemy or if you throw out your tongue you can stun them because you've already applied your three stacks uh so it, you know it's a weird strategy but i mean it could work but yeah so hello blades it's a pretty cool keystone for sure moving on to the smaller runes here first we got uh cheap shot bonus tree damage to enemy champions with impaired movement or actions so this is really easy to do if you've got a champion with a root a stun a slow pretty much any form of cc on your champion will make true shot a valuable uh smaller room to have taste of blood heal when you damage an enemy champion also very valuable to have so this actually for this particular row this is one of the hardest to choose from because You'll often have champions that could really benefit from at least two, if not all three of these at a time. So healing, 
I mean, it's just what it sounds like. Uh, it goes on cooldown, but it'll heal you after you do damage, so you can kind of just take it whenever. And then sudden impact, burst of lethality, and magic pen after using a dash, leap, blink, teleport, or when leaving stealth. So lethality and magic penetration cut through armor and magic resistance, meaning you'll deal more damage. Uh, so it's good. Um, and lethality, so magic pen is either flat or a percentage. There used to be flat armor pin and a percentage armor pin, but they instead changed the flat armor pin to something called lethality, and instead of it being like 15 armor penetration, it actually just negates 15 armor. So let's say, you know, early in the game, you're going against uh, enemy AD carry, and you have uh, a serrated dirk, which applies lethality. And they don't have any armor built, so let's say they're sitting at like 33 armor, and you've got currently negating 11 armor. Well, crap, they have 22 armor now. That's just how it works. So, if you don't build any armor, you're gonna get crushed. Um, so, but, uh, you know, Sudden Impact only works if you have one of these possible movement abilities. Um, if you don't, there's literally no reason to take this, unless you're trolling. Okay, next row we got Zombie Ward. Takedowns on enemy wards cause friendly zombie wards to sprout from their corpses. You gain permanent AD or AP, which is adaptive for each zombie ward spawned, plus a bonus upon completion. So, whenever you destroy enemy wards, you get wards in their place. Uh, that can be really helpful. Really make the vision game a lot easier for you, uh, because... As they say, wards save lives, so destroying your enemy's wards means they can't save their own lives. Very nice. And plus you get bonus damage for doing it, so it's it's a win-win. Plus you get gold for destroying wards as well, so it's like, why not? Uh, next we got Ghost Poro. When your wards expire, they leave behind a Ghost Poro. Ghost Poro grants vision until discovered. Permanent AD or AP for each Ghost Poro, and when Ghost Poro spots an enemy champion, plus bonus upon completion. So. When this happens, it'll leave a little visible poro showing some vision, and it will stay there until it's discovered. So these zombie wards will eventually expire, where the ghost poro potentially, it's highly unlikely, but potentially it could stay there the entire game if nobody walks by it. Um, and so the more ghost poros you have out on the map, the more AD slash AP you can have. Um, so it's, if you are in the jungle and you're a hard counter jungler, per se, then taking this to destroy your enemy's wards can be really helpful and it can help you keep track of where they are. Um, and then lastly, eyeball collection. Collect eyeballs for champion takedowns, permanent AD or AP for each eyeball, plus bonus upon completion. So this is like a smaller form of Dark Harvest. Um, you don't get as much damage, and you also have to get the takedown rather than damaging a low enemy champion. So you have to get a kill or an assist for this to work. Um, but it's essentially the same sort of concept where you can continuously stack it and get more and more damage. So last one we got down here, there's actually four, um, and it's the Hunters. Yeah, it doesn't particularly matter. So Ravenous, unique Tanta... Uh, yeah. Excuse me. Talking is hard sometimes. Unique takedowns grant permanent healing from ability damage. So, you have uh, Spell Vamp and Lifesteal. Lifesteal is based off attack damage. Spell Vamp is based on casting spells. Uh, so this is essentially Spell Vamp. And Unique obviously means only happens once. There's five enemy champions, so you can get this up to a max of five times. Um, and then it becomes like a just a permanent value that's there uh so this one for if you're using a lot of abilities it could be really helpful uh this one take down some permanent active item cdr including trinkets so you can use your wards more often along with uh potentially if you use uh the slowy strategy uh with uh, glacial augment and you're constantly using the Twin Shadows and the Hextech GLP uh, after five unique kills, 
those will be on a shorter cooldown, letting you use those items more frequently. Third, Restless, you get more movement speed. Simple as it sounds, uh, up to a max. And then Ultimate, it's permanent cooldown reduction on your ultimate. And so this can be super helpful in champions with disgustingly long ultimate cooldowns. Uh, things that come to mind are Karthus and Shin, who's uh, rank 1 ultimate, which can first be taken at level 6. You always, always should take your ultimate when it's available, but you aren't forced to. You're able to level up whatever you want. Uh, but again, your ultimate is your ultimate for a reason. Uh, so, their rank 1 ultimate is a 200 second cooldown, which is a massive, massive amount of time in this game. It's not really time you can afford to waste. Alright, moving on to a third tree, Sorcery. Empowered Abilities and Resource Manipulation. So this is primarily taken on uh, most mages and some supports. Um, you'll see maybe even a jungler or two take it. Uh, but again, if we're gonna associate a primary role with each tree, this would be mages. Uh, okay, so first keystone, we got summon airy. So your attacks and abilities send airy to a target, damaging enemies or shielding allies. So summon airy, and then this next one, uh, arcane comet. I'm gonna go ahead and explain it, and then the two are quite similar, so I'm going to explain the benefits of each. Um, so Arcane Comet, damaging an enemy champion with an ability, hurls a damaging comet at their location. So, summon Airy. A, it provides shields to your allies. Uh, if you cast like a shield or a heal on them, um, or you protect them from something. So, that is a uh, bonus in its, I guess, column. Uh, because Arcane Comet cannot affect your allies. Uh, however, uh, it doesn't deal as much damage. Uh, what, one more bonus I should say though is it definitely guaranteed to hit enemy champions where Arcane Comet is not, but Summon Airy, again, doesn't deal as much damage. Arcane Comet will trigger in a location and you'll kind of see where the Comet's gonna hit on the ground, but it deals significantly more damage than Airy does but you can dodge from the comet. Uh, it's pretty easy to dodge unless you're slowed or stuck with an ability. So if you have a champion that's able to slow people down, like potentially with the, uh, they build a Hextech GLP, then you can hit them with the Arcane Comet and so deal some extra damage. So, you know, th there's trade-offs to each, either higher damage or uh, guaranteed to hit and the ability to help out allies. Third is the phase rush. Hitting the enemy champion with three separate attacks or abilities grants a burst of movement speed. So it's kind of like from the precision tree, press the attack, where you hit him three times. Except with this one, uh, you just get a large amount of movement speed. Um, and so this can be really helpful for uh, slow champions. Uh, one champion that comes to mind is Rise. And so Rise can easily easily get out three abilities like that because his E and his W both reset the cooldown on his Q so you can Q E Q boom if you hit enemy champions with all three of those there's your bonus phase or speed and so Rise can also if he triggers his W and E on the same target and then hits it with his Q he'll activate his runes and even more movement speed so you can pretty much get away from anything uh so phase rush it's really nice to have it's a very good utility one but it doesn't deal any damage so that's the trade-off if you were going to take it uh, as opposed to arcane comet or summon area i'll take a drink real quick <clears throat> all right so now we're moving on to the secondaries so first we got nullifying orb Magic damage shield when taken to low health by magic damage. That's exactly what it sounds like. Uh, there's actually an item that does a much better version of this called the Mal Malmordius. It has magic resistance and attack damage. And if you're taken to low health by magic damage, it'll give you a big ol' shield. So this gives you a smaller version of that, but it only triggers on magic damage. So if you become low on health due to a uh, attack damage ability, 
it's not going to work, so it doesn't help you out much. Uh, next, we have Mana Flow Band. Hitting an enemy champion with an ability permanently increases your maximum mana by 25 up to 250 mana. After reaching 250, you restore 1% of your missing mana every 5 seconds. So this is super helpful, uh, especially in ARAM, um, which obviously I know is just like a fun game mode, not a real game mode. But there's often, I mean, even champions who stack mana like Rise, uh, that can be really helpful for having extra mana and then being able to have that just constant refresh uh, applied to your base mana region is very very nice to have um, but it only applies to mana so if your champion does not use mana as a resource if they use fury or grit or have nothing there's no reason to take mana flow band third is nimbus cloak after casting a summer spell, get a short amount of movement speed, and increases, uh, increases your movement speed, and you can pass through units. Uh, Nimbus Cloak is good to have uh, if you're going to flash in on somebody. Uh, one champion that comes to mind is Set. Now, you would not you would take this in your secondary uh, tree, not your primary, but if you took Nimbus Cloak, if you flash in, then you can power use your Q for your little boost of movement speed plus the Nimbus Cloak and then you can try to catch up to somebody and pull them back before you ult them so it, it's good uh, and it can be used offensively or defensively for sure so second row we have Transcendence 10% CDR when you reach level 10 excess CDR becomes AD or AP adaptive uh, so cooldown reduction there's a maximum cap of 40 there is one uh, rune that allows you to break that cap to 45. So, for this one, once you're level 10, boom, there's 10 CDR, and cooldown reduction uh, reduces the cooldown of your abilities. So, uh, if you don't build any cooldown reduction, this is 10 cooldown reduction that you're just going to have after you reach level 10, which is nice. Um, if, you do <clears throat> if you do build CDR, then you can't go past that maximum 40, so even with this 10%, let's say somehow, highly unlikely, but somehow, if you get to 40% before reaching level 10, then this would be a large amount of extra damage that you get uh, just because of this particular rune. Uh, so next we have Clarity. Movement speed bonuses are 7% more effective on you, and you gain 1% movement speed. So I believe uh, that 1% movement speed is a little bit new and that's not very much but it can make a slight difference and it could probably mean the difference between life and death uh, but this is really good on champions that have an ability that speeds you up because it's seven percent more effective so let's say a trundle took it and he becomes quicker when using his frozen tundra uh, now he's even faster so he can catch up to somebody and hit him with the uh, ice pillar or you're a Sona trying to get the lane quickly and this boom you activate your E and then you're going faster and even faster due to clarity so it's if you have an ability that makes you move quickly clarity is a good option to take if you don't have a movement speed ability uh, it's not super good to take there are some exceptions to that uh, if you get like a burst of movement speed then it would be even more effective from like an item like Yobu's Ghost Blade or if an ally like a zillion uh, speeds you up then it's even more effective kind of thing because they're more effective on you not on allies so zillion using it on himself in this instance let's say he didn't take clarity but you did he wouldn't get that bonus seven percent but if he used it on you you would get that bonus seven percent on top of the base amount of movement speed the ability grants and uh it's just it's nice to have good to be able to go fast just like sonic uh so last one here in this row absolute focus all above 70 percent health deal extra adaptive damage pretty much again what it sounds like so if you're able to stay back maintain your health at a pretty normal rate then you should have no issues dealing extra damage uh, but if you get low on health quite quickly then absolute focus probably is not the rune that you want to be taking
All right, so moving on to the last tree here. Uh, Scorch. First damaging ability every 10 seconds burns champions. Uh, it's just a little bit of extra damage on each ability, but uh, if you're not dueling a lot, let's say you're staying back uh, in lane, Scorch can be good, just causing a little bit of extra damage, um, especially early on in the game, can really make a difference. So... Yeah, just sit back, kind of, you know, farm some minions. Every 10 seconds, try to throw out an ability, hit an enemy champion for some extra damage. Uh, so Scorch ha has many uses. Uh, next, we got Water Walking, Movement Speed, and AP or AD in the river. So this can turn the tide if you're fighting in river by either Rift, uh, one of the Drakes, Baron, or even Elder Dragon. Um so you can come in faster and deal more damage uh, but water walking doesn't work on a map with no water which is why if you select this one and you go into Aran which is on Howling Abyss it's a one lane ordeal this will automatically get changed by the rune system because there's no water for you to benefit from this rune which is nice uh, but you're not just being stuck with a dead rune uh, last one here we have is Gathering Storm. So you gain increasing amounts of AD or AP adaptive damage over the course of the game. The longer the game goes, the stronger you get. That's really all it is. So if you are a really, really hard scaling champion and you take a long time to get going, the longer the game goes, you're going to get even stronger. So Gathering Storm, it's good for the long haul, but if you're trying to win a game quickly, you're not going to benefit too much from this, as opposed to other runes in this row. So, fourth tree here, we got Resolve, Durability, and Crowd Control. So, Keystones. First, we got Grasp of the Undying, which I have mentioned quite early in this explanation stream here. Uh, so, every four seconds, your next attack on a champion deals bonus magic damage, heals you, and permanently increases your health. So hit an enemy champion, and you get healed, deals extra damage, and then your health is permanently increased. It may not seem like a lot uh, that your health only increases by 5, but if you get 20 procs off, well, that's, uh, that's quite a bit different, huh? So, I mean, and this has no cap, uh, unlike some other runes. So it can, you can just keep stacking, stacking, getting even bigger and bigger. Um, and the ability that it even heals you while gaining permanent health is nice to have. Uh, so next we have Aftershock. After immobilizing an enemy champion, gain defenses, later deal a burst of magic damage around you. So this is what you want to take as a support, and which is why you don't just want to run with the preset tree for the resolve uh, that has been provided for you because supports are going to have a much harder time using Grasp of the Undying rather than Aftershock. If you're uh, a Taric, uh, Taric has a stun built into his kit, you land it, boom, you get the Aftershock trigger. So it's very helpful, um, and the extra defenses can make you quite difficult to take down. Uh, lastly, is Guardian. Guard your allies you cast spells on and those that are very nearby. If you or a guarded ally would take damage based on level, you're both granted a shield. Uh, this used to not be a super good one to take because the range was so small. So it was really hard to make sure that you were in range of an ally. Now the range is much larger than it was, so it's pretty easy if an ally is nearby. Even if you don't have an ability that you can directly cast on an ally, uh, as a support, uh, as long as you're staying near them, you can get this trigger, and the shield that it provides after being hit is very nice. Uh, protect you, you know, you could protect you from death, potentially. Uh, before I go down into the secondary ones, I will make mention, as I had for the other three, this tree resolve is primarily associated with supports uh, and tanks, but again, that is not always the case, and that doesn't always have to happen. Uh, okay, so moving down to the secondary row. 
so we got demolished. Charge up a powerful attack against the tower while near it. Uh, so this, what it looks like in a game, you're near a tower, and you'll start to see a little countdown of like crystal shards go around the tower, and when all the crystal shards disappear, your next hit on the tower deals significantly more damage. Uh, so this can be very good on champions that need uh, are split pushing and are able to quickly take down towers. This can make it even faster with just one big attack on top of what you're already doing to the turret. So, but that's the only use this has. Uh, potentially the other two in this particular row are more beneficial, but Demolish does have its uses. Next we've got Font of Life, impairing movement in a champion, marks them. Your allies heal when attacking champions you've marked. So this is a great support rune to take, especially if you're taking Aftershock. So if you immobilize them with the Aftershock, get the boost. Then you can also trigger the Font of Life, which marks the champion, and your allies will start to heal when hitting them. Uh, very good, but not super useful if you're in a solo lane by yourself because it doesn't heal you, it only heals your allies. Third, Shield Bash. Whenever you get a shield, your next basic attack against a champion deals bonus adaptive damage. This can be very useful on champions that either can get their own shield, or uh, you can grant a shield to an ally. Um, well, I suppose this would be more useful for the tanks rather than supports because you only want to be shielding yourself to get this trigger. Shielding an ally would not proc Shield Bash. Uh, but one champion that comes to mind is Poppy, uh, who, her passive, she throws her buckler, and whenever she picks it up, she gets a shield. So she can throw it, pick it up, get the shield, and then she'll get extra damage on her next attack against the champion. Moving to the next row. Conditioning. After 12 minutes, you gain 9 armor and 9 magic resist, and increase your armor and magic resist by 5%. This is a waiting game one. Get to 12 minutes, and then you just get stronger. It's just how it is. Uh, so, especially if you're getting pretty tanky, building a lot of armor and magic resist items, yeah, maybe the extra 9 won't mean much if you already have 150 armor and 175 magic resist, but increasing that by 5% will mean something. So, it's good to take if you're stacking a lot of those kind of items. Uh, next, second wind. After taking damage from an enemy champion, heal back some missing health over time. Um, that's kind of what it sounds like. If you get hit, and then you stop taking damage, then you'll start to restore some health. Uh, good for trades. Um, if you're going to be in a losing matchup, uh, based on draft, then second wind can be a nice rune to take here, because you know you're going to get hit, so this will just keep you in lane as long as you can, and longer than you would normally be able to stay. So, the second one's got some good uses. Uh, so third here, Bone Plating. After taking damage from an enemy champion, next three spells or attacks you receive from them deal 30-60% to 60 less damage. So this, kind of, instead of healing health back over time, the more they attack you, the less damage they will deal. Uh, and so, most of these used to have a cooldown for how long they would last. Uh, for some reason, it's still on bone plating. So it lasts for one and a half seconds, and the cooldown is 45 seconds before it can be triggered again. Uh, I'm going to be honest, I don't know the cooldowns of each of these runes by heart. Um, so... But you will be able to tell there is a icon uh, that you'll see above your champion like bar in the middle of the screen at the bottom, and you can see when there's like a little sort of clock that goes around to see when the uh, rune will be recharged. So uh, another good tank one to take here uh, if you know you're going to be getting hit and you're less concerned about getting health back. So, third row here. Overgrowth. Permanent max health whenever minions or monsters die near you. Good to take with Grasp. Uh, that way you're getting permanent health from Grasp. And then the minions and monsters that die, you're getting health from those as well. 
Uh, so that's just lots and lots of health for you. Next is Revitalize. Heals and shields you cast or receive. 5% stronger. Increased an additional 10% on low health targets. So, very good for supports who have a heal. Or a shield. They become even stronger just immediately by having this rune. Um, and 5%, again, is not huge early on, but when you start having more, you know, whether your shield's based off of armor, ability, power, magic, resist, attack damage, what have you, 5% can make a decent difference. And then it can go up to a bonus 15% if you, including the original 5 plus 10 on low health targets. So you can really heal somebody up good uh, if they're low on health, about to die, then you have a 15% stronger heal than what you would normally have by taking this. So good, good for supports, not great for uh, solo laners. And last, unflinching. You gain a small amount of tenacity that increases with missing health. You are harder to kill based on how much health you are missing. Uh, one champion that would benefit from this is Olaf, who I mentioned earlier. Uh, getting harder and harder to kill as you are lower and lower on health. So that's pretty much all tenacity is and things don't affect you as long. And uh, It's just good good tanky little room there uh, okay so we are going to move on to the fifth and final tree inspiration creative tools and rule bending so this one is kind of challenging because it doesn't have a specific role that is attached to it uh, people will often say it supports but that's not necessarily the case you can really kind of take this on anyone. Sometimes you'll even see some mid lane mages take it because of one particular keystone. Uh, so it's just really kind of all over the place. Uh, but mainly what you'll see from people, not they won't take the keystone, but over here in the secondary, they will take inspiration and then pick from down here because there are some very, very good runes that are in here. All right, so starting with Glacial Augment. Your first attack against enemy champions slows them per unit cooldown. Slowing champions with an active item shoots a freeze ray at them, creating a lingering slow zone. So this is the ultimate, ultimate keystone to take if you're going to run what they call the slowy build, uh, which is the Super Soaker and the Spooky Ghosts. Or, if you don't know what those are, the Hextech GLP, which shoots uh, a freeze ray of bolts, as its active item and then the twin shadows which sends out two ghosts that lock onto enemy champions and slow them by a percentage so by using those and then hitting enemy champions with them it then becomes an even bigger slow so they are like really slowed down and it makes it significantly easier to catch up to them and do things to them one champion this works really well on is zillion who He's able to stun enemy champions if he lands two bombs on them, because his W uh, reduces the cooldown on his other basic abilities by 10 seconds. So you can double bomb somebody, and sometimes it's kind of hard to land if they're running backwards or running forwards, side to side, whatever, to dodge you. If you slow them down with one of your active items, and then they get even slower because of Glacial Augment, it's much easier to land that stun for big damage. So next, Unsealed Spellbook. You can swap summer spells while out of combat. Swapping to unique summer spells increases the rate at which you can make future swaps. So, you can literally take any spell you want uh, at the start of the game, and then if you decide, okay, this is really crucial, we need to have something particular, say there's going to be a 50-50 smite fight, you could potentially make it even more challenging for the enemy to win that if you have another person on your team who also has smite, but they're not wasting a summoner spell because they have unsealed spellbook, and they're taking it for that particular instance. Uh, another perfect example for that is taking teleport. Uh, so let's say you take an exhaust or an ignite as a support in lane, but you're planning a gank uh, top lane. So you go back to base, you know, get what you need, and then you can swap to teleport and then go help out on that gank, gank much quicker 
than you would have normally been able to. So, and using different summoner spells makes you able to use your summoner spells more quickly. Uh, but the, the goal is not to swap to every unique spell because you're not going to need every single spell like that. You, you can swap to different ones based on utility where you need them and then you're able to access those quicker, which is nice to have. So third is a the newest of the keystones, Prototype Omnistone. Periodically grants a single use of another random keystone. This is literally a jack of all trades. Uh, it will give you a random keystone from any of the other keystones. You use it once, and then it goes on cooldown, and then it will give you a different keystone. Uh, this used to be a different keystone, and that became way too much of a nuisance, so they replaced it with something that can become everything. Uh, I, you really often don't see this at all unless you just see someone who's kind of like trolling, or there are a few champions that can literally use every single keystone, and so this can be good for them. The only issue is is that it's random. You don't get to pick what keystones you want. Uh, so even if you have a champion that could benefit from any keystone, in a particular instance, if you get one that's not good for it, yeah, whatever's happening, you're kind of kind of screwed there. Uh, so it's it's kind of like a grab bag, you know. It may work out for you, it may not. It's just kind of you gotta dive into the deep end and see what happens. All right, moving on to the last secondary rune section. First we get Hextech Flash Traption. While Flash is on cooldown, it is replaced by Hex Flash. So Hex Flash has a channel and then you blink to a location. So Hex Flash, it takes a little while to channel. Uh, positive, it's basically another mini flash that you can use much more quickly while the real flash is cooling down. Negative is you have to stand in place for few seconds to be able to use it and the range isn't as big as flash but you're able to you know hop over a wall because you have a uh, hex flash here instead of waiting for the whole cooldown of flash you can hop over you know uh, some champions like set will take this because he can if you already used your flash for a gank then you can just do a little flash over the wall and then coming for another gank, even though your flash was already used. Uh, so next we've got magical footwear. You get free boots at 12 minutes, but you can't buy boots before them. Each takedown you get makes your boots come 45 seconds sooner. So this is very nice on champions who need to start building with specific items. And a lot of times people will start with boots, pots, you know, uh, and boots are 300 gold. You can spend that 300 gold elsewhere if you take magical footwear, and then at 12 minutes you'll get your boots, but you can't buy them before then, so that can be kind of challenging unless you get takedowns. If you get a lot of takedowns, you can get your boots quite quickly and make this room super worthwhile, uh, plus the bonus of having the magical boots, the slightly magical boots whenever you get them. It's a bonus 10% or 10 movement speed. So normally it's uh, you know, a flat amount of movement speed for the boots. Whatever boots you upgrade to are also a flat amount of movement speed. Having the magical footwear though will give you an extra 10 on top of that. And so the, the magical footwear or the slightly magical boots will build into any second tier boot as well so you're not stuck. Great, now I have these boots and then I have to sell them to buy regular boots. Uh, it will build into the higher tier boots, which is nice. Uh, but you don't get any takedowns. You can't have boots till 12 minutes. So trade off. Next is this perfect timing. Get a free commencing stopwatch. After 14 minutes, it can be used for a one-time stasis effect. Each takedown you get shortens this timer by 120 seconds. So this is essentially. A Zanya's hour, one time use Zanya's Hourglass. And so this can be super useful and super surprising if the enemy's not expecting it. You can save yourself, or uh, you, know, 
about to be taken out by a tower shot. Use your stopwatch, and you're safe. Uh, the only problem is it comes at 14 minutes, which is pretty far into the game. Normally. However, each takedown cuts it down by two minutes. So, that doesn't mean that two minutes until you can use it again. The stopwatch only works once, unlike Azania's Hourglass, which has a cooldown to be used again. So, it's like a it's like a little teaser if you're gonna buy Azania's. Um, and then it does build in, the stopwatch will build into two other items as well, uh, but they don't have the stasis effect. So it makes more sense to use the stopwatch if you're gonna build it into one of those two items. Sometimes you will see some people have the stopwatch, build it into a Zanya's, and then purchase another stopwatch, which is possible. As long as you don't use it, it can still be you. Um, you can upgrade one and then buy another one. So essentially, you can have two Zanya's for a fight, it's, uh, which is really kind of unfair. But at the same time, it takes a while to be able to do that. So you know, it's kind of whatever. But, when you use it, it becomes broken, you can't use it again. However, it will build into the next tiered item, so you're not just stuck with a crap item. Kind of like the Slightly Magical Boots. Moving on to the second row. Futures Market. Enter debt to buy items. Exactly what it sounds like. You can have, uh, let's say, you're 100 gold short on buying a BF sword. You can go into debt. Negative 100 gold. Boom, there you go. And then your gold count will just go up until it gets to zero, so decrease from negative 100, negative 99, negative 98, and then it will start going positive. So it can be very helpful uh, for certain champions. You're just like, oh man, I just wish I had a little more gold. Uh, it just gives you some extra gold, some extra wiggle room, if you will. Uh, so next we've got Minion Dematerializer. Start the game with three minion dematerializers. Killing minions with this item grants permanent bonus damage first that minion type. Uh, so whether it's a caster, a melee, a cannon, or even super uh, slash siege, uh, you can instantly use this item and it will immediately kill the minion and then you will deal more damage to that minion type for the rest of the game. So, uh, a strategy that can be taken is taking Minion Dematerializer uh, in ARAM and just saving them. So, let's say you're getting pretty crushed in the end and they got supers coming down towards your Nexus. You can instantly get rid of one Super Brandian with this item and then maybe you stand a chance. Um, but, you can also just use it on regular minions so you're easily easily able to take them out uh, so you can kill minions faster and move around the map more kind of thing. Next is biscuit delivery. You gain a free biscuit every two minutes up until six minutes. So three biscuits. Consuming or selling a biscuit permanently increases your maximum mana and it restores health and mana. So the biscuit will restore both health and mana and it will permanently increase your mana. So again this is not an item to take if mana is not your resource on the champion. Uh, but if you use a lot of mana as a champion, uh, it's a great thing to have because it will restore some and then you permanently have an extra amount of mana added up to a cap because you only get three biscuits. Uh, final row, Cosmic Insight. 5% CDR, 5% max CDR, 5% summoner spell CDR, 5% item CDR. So I mentioned this earlier, the max cooldown reduction is 40%. If you take this rune, it becomes 45%. And this is the only way to get to 45%. And it also reduces the cooldown on your summoner spells, so you can teleport or flash more quickly, and your items, so you can use your GLP or spooky ghosts faster, uh, running the slowy build. So it's just, it's great to have. It really is. Approach Velocity. Bonus movement speed towards nearby enemy champions that are movement impaired, increased for enemy champions that you specifically impair. So, you start to run faster, if they're slowed or rooted or whatever, 
If you do the slowing or the rooting, you'll be even faster running towards them. And this can be very helpful if you're a champion that likes to catch up to other champions. Uh, to you know, beat them down good kind of thing. Uh, one champion this could work well with is Sivir. Because she already has that kind of as her passive. And then her alt grants bonus movement speed running towards enemy champions. And... Let's say an enemy slows them, then you'll be even faster running towards them so you can try to catch up and hit them with a couple boomerangs. So, it's good to have. It has its uses, but it's... If you were going to take one from this row, uh, you would more likely want to take one of the other two almost every time. But, again, this has its uses, and I'm not telling you what to do, just what each rune does, so you can make a educated decision on what you want to use. And our last rune is Time Warp Tonic. Potions and Biscuits grant some restoration immediately, and you gain movement speed while under their effects. So you gain a little bit of movement whenever you drink a potion, or if you take biscuit delivery, then whenever you eat a biscuit, uh, you'll get that movement speed. Plus, it'll start happening faster. So instead of restoring an amount of health over a couple of seconds, it'll restore some health immediately after consuming it, and then over the next couple seconds, it doesn't mean you get more health out of the biscuit or potion, but it's instant gratification, uh, so that way you're not stuck. You know, if Ignite's ticking down, you're low on health. If you activate a potion without having Time Warp Tonic, it might not tick over your health in time, because it takes time to restore your health. But Time Warp Tonic, even with the Ignite, you get some instant health back, and then you're safe. So lastly over here... We have the lovely little extras. Uh, they have some different names, what people want to call them. I like to call them perks. Uh, and this is where you get your damage slash other items. So there's, throughout the runes, there's no plus this damage amount or plus this amount of attack speed, plus this amount of armor. These are all flat values save for uh, the attack speed and cooldown reduction. And then you just instantly get those uh, from the start of the game. So in the first row, we have Adaptive Force, so plus 9, AP or AD. Off attack speed, 10%. Cooldown reduction, 1 to 10% based on level. So you can pick one of the three. Next row. Adaptive Force, same thing. So if you take both of these, that's bonus 18. Uh, plus 6 armor, plus 8 magic resist. Uh, and so the rows even have names, so you have your offensive row, your flex row, and your defensive row. So you can pick a sort of, you know, okay, well, I want some extra damage, I need a little bit of extra armor, and maybe I want to take health. Uh, so the defense tree, again, flat armor, flat magic resist, and flat health based on level. So these are just little extra bonuses that you get just at the start of the game. Uh, extra 18 damage could be pretty helpful. Or uh, already having an extra 1% cooldown reduction just right at the start of the game could be nice. Or even if you want to take attack speed and you're an 80 carry but you have like no magic resist. If you take both magic resists here that is an extra 16 magic resist that you would otherwise not have, making you able to survive more. So, that is the summation of what the new, I say in quotations, rune system is, uh, what everything does, and just to go through uh, everything, not again, but as to what to do if I was going to be making a rune page. Uh, so first you'd click on one of the five trees that you think you want to run. So let's go with Domination. Uh, let's say I'm playing a champion that does a lot of attacks quickly. So I want the most out of those quick attacks. I'll take Hail of Blades as my keystone. I have to pick one from these three rows. Let's say I have a dash. Pick some impact. Uh, let's say that, uh, you know, I'm placing some wards. Want some extra vision. I'll take those four row. And then let's say my cooldown's on a really long cooldown, or my ultimate is on a long cooldown, so I'll take Ultimate Hunter to get 
cooldown reduction on my ult. For the second tree, I have to pick one of the other four, and then you can only pick from the secondary section. You can't take a keystone from there. Uh, so let's say I really liked that biscuit idea from inspiration. So I'll take the biscuits. And then I can pick another one and say, oh, well, I want those biscuits quicker. I'll take Time Warp Tonic. Now, one thing that is different about the secondary tree here is that I can take an item from the top row and then from the bottom row. I'm not required to take them in order like I am over here. So I can have Hextech Flash Traption and Cosmic Insight if I wanted. But for this example, I want Biscuit Delivery and Time Warp Tonic. And at the bottom, I deal lots of damage, but I do attacks quickly, so I'm going to take attack speed for the offensive, adaptive force for the flex, and then a little bit of tankiness, I'll take armor for the defensive. And then you just hit save, and at the start of the champion select, you can click on which rune page you want and take this rune page. So I hope this helped. Uh, maybe someone out there who didn't really understand what the rune system does, or maybe needed a little explanation on why you would take one over the other, or even just so you can make your own rune page instead of relying on the preset five that you are given. So, uh, thanks for checking this out. Appreciate it. And uh, I will catch you all later.